In the last couple of weeks, I already talked a little bit about Google products. Today, I'm going to talk about another service from them called Google Photos. Are you taking a lot of photos on your phone? Then you might run into one of the two problems that you're never finding the pictures you're looking for or your storage is always full. Google Photos is here to solve kind of both of these problems. I don't really know about the Android side of this application. Maybe it's pre-installed in every system. I don't really know that. But if it's not, you definitely should check it out. Apple, on the other hand, actually offers a pretty similar service, but I think the Google version is far superior in many ways and I personally think that Apple is a great hardware and a operating system company but with the services they don't really get it. But what is Google Photos all about? First up, Google Photos is an app for your Android or iOS device to manage your photos. It integrates directly into the camera roll and you don't really have to work any more than that. Additionally, it is also there for backing up your pictures and for sorting them and making them more accessible. And that's where the fun starts. The backing up part actually is really interesting because the application actually gives you two options to do that. You can either choose you want to have the pictures in original file size, but that counts towards the Google Drive storage. So if you're using the free version there, you only have 15 gigabytes. But on the other side, if you choose to only upload high quality pictures, then Google Photos is actually completely completely free and unlimited. On top of just storing your pictures, Google Photos also kind of sorts or categorizes your pictures. You can basically search for many things. For example, if you've been to an event like a wedding or a climbing trip, then you can actually search for climbing or for wedding, and it actually automatically shows you pictures that relate to this kind of term. Obviously, this is an add-on to the backup service because the pictures actually have to be uploaded to the cloud, and then a machine learning process looks at the picture and categorizes it. But it's not just categorizing things like wedding or climbing trips, it actually also searches for faces and combines those together in certain groups. Also, the application is made in a way that it presents edited photos for you and it combines pictures you have taken in a certain time frame and a certain location to albums so you can better search for those pictures later. The automatic categorization of those pictures is one of the things I really like about the service. The automatic photo editing, the animations, the collages, those things don't really matter to me because I most likely do my editing myself. But the whole thing about being able to search for certain terms and find pictures is amazing. And it's not just possible to search those terms on your phone. You can also go to photos.google.com and then you have a web interface to your album. So you have a big version of what you have on your phone, but it's in the browser and you can type faster, you can upload pictures from your computer and you can sort your pictures there. But what about storage on your phone? The app on your phone actually has a function to delete pictures that have been uploaded to the cloud. So you don't have the big versions on your phone, you only have certain preview files. And then if you want to send the big version to someone or you want to view the big version or edit it, you have to download it back to your phone. But this process actually gives you an opportunity to have more room on your phone, you have your pictures backed up in the cloud and you have them searchable all in one app. Now this is a specific thing I wanted to show you directly on your phone. Once you've downloaded the Google Photos app on your iOS device and you open it up, it will instantly ask you to access the camera roll. Obviously, you want to give that access because basically the app doesn't make any sense if you don't give it the access. Once you've done that, you will have your camera roll here and you can just scroll through, you can view the pictures, you can edit them right in the application and there is a basic editor there. You can also use Snapseed, which I have talked about in another video, and you can share your pictures, for example. But going back, you can also go into the settings to the top left. There's those three bars next to the search bar. And there you have a lot of menu options. We want to go into the settings. From there, go into backup and sync. And in the backup area, you want to have backup and sync activated. And then in the upload size area, you will have to decide between high quality and original. I use Google Apps for work, which basically gives me unlimited storage, so I want to have it at original. And I really care about my pictures, so I want to have them in original size online. If you don't use that, I think high quality is good enough for most people. So you can just leave it there and then you have free storage for unlimited amounts of pictures. From there, going back, you can then go into manage device storage. Now, of course, if you just started the backup process, there will be nothing to be freed up because the pictures will have to be uploaded first and then they can be freed up. Basically, you can come in here if you don't have enough storage for taking new pictures or new videos and you can say free up space and then it will automatically delete pictures for you which are already uploaded to the cloud. Going back to the backup and sync, I personally don't want it to upload while I'm on cellular data, so I just want it to back up when I'm on Wi-Fi, so I disabled those two options. If you have tons of data in your contract, obviously you could also use that, but I think most of us are with Wi-Fi often enough, so that can be just turned off. 
Once you've clicked on the free up space button, it will tell you how many pictures could be deleted. Now those pictures are not being deleted, they are just being removed from your phone, so you can later see them in the web application or in the app as previews and then you can download them again. One thing you have to keep in mind with iOS devices is that the pictures Google Photos deletes are not yet deleted from the phone itself. You will get a warning about this and you will have to go into the normal photos app and go into the trash and delete them from there. For me the easiest way to get there is actually to open this kind of spotlight interface, search for the photos app because normally I have stored it away somewhere deep in the folders. Let's photo. And then once you're in the photos app you can go into the recently deleted items, touch the button on the top right called select and then down to the left you have delete all. Once you've deleted those all, they're gone from your phone and once you reopen the photos app, you will still have all the pictures there for previewing or downloading or whatever you wanna do. So to wrap this up, Google Photos is a great way to keep your photos organized, be able to search them, have them backed up and be able to recover them whenever you want to view them. And if you want to share the pictures with the family or for example, an album, you can still do that with links or inviting people. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please let me know in the comments down below how you use Google Photos or if you use something completely different. Also subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and connect with me on my other social media accounts linked in the description below. I will see you tomorrow.